chapter 29, verse 1. All right. And we'll go ahead and open this in prayer here. Glorious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. And thank you for the chance to meet together here and to open up your word and to look into it and to hopefully see just beautiful things in it that reveal your son, Jesus. And Lord, we just want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you're due, all in his name. Amen. Amen. Ah, boy. All right. Chapter 29, verse 1, please. Anybody? Nope. Small day today. Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern people. There he saw a well in the field with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the, because the flocks were watered from that well. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. When herds would, would roll the Birds. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? You left off the ship. <laughs> when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds we rolled the stone away from I shouldn't be reading. We rolled the stone away from the well's mouth and watered the sheep. Then they would return the well to the stone and place over the mouth of the well. I got that right. Okay, so this is after he's left his mom and dad traveled up through Israel, and he's all the way up, he said, um, journeying, he came to the land of the peoples of the east, meaning up in Padam or Am somewhere. They're not, it hasn't said where yet, but here he is at a well, and um, uh, he's uh, stopped there. And go ahead, verse 4. Jacob asked the shepherds, my brother, <laughs> where are you from? We're from Haran, they replied. Okay, Haran. Anybody know where that is? That's where Terah died. It's probably named after Terah's oldest son, Haran, who died back in Ur of the Chaldeans, who would be the older brother of Abraham. And these guys happen to be from Haran. So it's no coincidence that he just happens to stop at a well where these people are from the same place that his uh, grandfather Abraham actually departed from to go to the uh, promised land. Go ahead. Four. Five. 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 He said to them, Do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they said. Then Jacob asked them, Is he well? Yes, he is, they said. And here comes his daughter, Rachel, with the sheep. And do yeah, you see anything coincidental about all of this happening? It happens to know Laban, happens to know here's daughter comes walking up. You know, it, it's just amazing. And, I don't know if this is the same well where, um, what's his name, Isaac uh, met Rebecca or not. I have no idea because that was, she went out, was carrying a, a, you know, a jar to get water. And this seems to be out in the fields where a flock is. Could be the same well, might not be. But it just is not coincidence that he happens to be stopping at a particular well and his whole family and people that know him and everything else show up. Just simply amazing. So go ahead. Verse 7. Look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to the pasture. We can't, they replied, until all the, the flocks are gathered and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well. You know, now I've never quite understood why they say that. Maybe the, it's because the rock is so big they need all of the herdsmen that happen to be around to move this thing or something. But there's this dialogue going on here. I don't know if you have anything in your commentary that gives any insights into this, but it just it's in here for a reason, and I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is. But here they are, they're saying, well, why don't you water the flocks? And they say, we can't until they're all gathered. You know, I, it, could it be symbolic of Jesus and rolling the stone away? Absolutely. That's what I'm saying is if, if that's the case then, you know, it, it's something that's symbolizing something in Christ, but I'm not quite sure of what. Now, oh, you mean rolling the stone away from his grave? Also, the water yeah. of life and the water of life. Water of life, absolutely. So, you know, it, these, these are possibilities, but they're in here for a reason, and there's something that, you know, just is, is I'm trying to, I'm going to think about that as far as rolling the stone away, is that, you know, that was no obstacle to him, and out it went. And in the next verse, we're going to see that it was no obstacle to Jacob either. Yeah? There's another interesting phrase. Right. There. It is not time. That's right. Stop Absolutely. This whole thing, the entire thing, it's not time yet. When he says to do it, the whole thing is just kind of, and uh, do you have anything in your commentary that explains any of that? Oh, okay. You know, and normally I don't read them. 
but uh, you know, it's just one of these things that I've never really, you know, been able to piece the whole thing together. But anyway, okay, please go ahead. Verse nine. While he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And Jacob, when Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, his his uh, his brother, and Laban's sheep went over. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Rachel was with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. When Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Okay, so you see that. He rolled the stone away. It, 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 for some reason, these people didn't want to do it. It's not time, and, you know... I. What is the time? I mean, is it because the other shepherds haven't come? They all wait and talk at the well together? I have no idea what, but there's something that all of that is in telling us that, you know, I probably need to go to a Jewish commentary to figure that out. But How many times did Jesus say it's not time? Well, that's right. And so there's something that is fitting in here. And we just have to piece up. Why is he saying that? And if it has to do with the, the stone being rolled away from the, uh, the tomb, there's, we have to make the connection. It's not just to say that that symbolizes that unless we have a reason why. And I'm not sure what that reason is. So let's we'll think about it and maybe we can figure something out. Because I've read this, you know, 50 times and have never really been able to piece in my mind together what is being symbolized here. But it is here specifically and for a reason. So go ahead. Verse 11. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebecca's son. And she ran and told her father. Okay, so obviously this was a really arduous journey. If he's going to just weep aloud, he's so happy to finally be where he's at. He's just broken down, probably from exhaustion, probably from the loneliness. Never been away from his family a day in his life, probably. And, uh, and the stress. That and the stress, the absolutely. Everything, everything that is just overwhelming him. And here's this pretty young girl, and he's just like, he just breaks down. And then uh, Rachel runs to go tell the family. Go ahead, verse 13. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to them to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And there Jacob told him all these things. Okay, now Laban remembers that he was there back when Rebekah, this is the brother of Rebekah, and he remembers all the wealth that was brought for a bride the bride's price. Remember that when he brought all the camel loads of stuff up there and he was there. So was this an honest guy just coming to say, hey family, I want to see you, or is it because he knows that he might get something out of it? I don't know. The, the character of Laban seems to point later in the account that he is a guy that's out to get something. And uh, as I said, if you look at these accounts like from the modern perspective of Israel and um, uh, the neighbors around them. If the Jewish people have anything to offer, the people will come and grab it from them right away. Okay, but there's no l real love for the people in the process. So anyway, there you go. Just kind of keep that in mind. And uh, verse 14. Then Laban said to him, "You are my own flesh and blood." After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, "Just because you, you are a relative of mine." Should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Okay, same thing. It looks like he's being honest and upright, and he's saying, hey, you know, obviously he had him working out in the field or whatever he was doing. He says, you know, why, why should you be working for free? I, I just can't read these verses, though, without knowing the end and also knowing the uh, past when uh, Isaac came up to get Rebecca, that Laban's character shows that he's looking for something out of this in the end. Okay, that's just me, but uh, it does seem like he's being honest and dealing with him fairly at this particular point. All right, go ahead. And you know what? He may have already seen what we're about to read about. He may have already noticed that his uh, daughter is interesting to him. So, you know, you just have to kind of look at this and think, what was Laban thinking? And he just doesn't seem like a trustworthy guy. Okay, go ahead. Daughters, the name of the older was Leah, and, she, and the name of the younger was Rachel. 
Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Okay, so lovely in form, beautiful. It says it twice, and it also uh, uh, indicates that there's nothing wrong with you looking at a handsome guy, a beautiful woman. Nothing wrong with that. The Lord made us. What's that? Well, weak eyes, in this translation, they made it delicate, but my guess is she had a lazy eye. That's, that's probably what happened. Is she just has got, she's, she's just not a real looker, and I think probably she's got a lazy eye. She's just, you know, but um, uh, there's nothing wrong with noticing beauty. God created people beautiful, and it says in Ecclesiastes, he has made everything beautiful in its time. It also says in the entire book of the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, speaks of the beauty of the wife, the handsomeness of the husband. It's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, you know, it's what you do with it in your mind beyond that that's wrong. So there's nothing wrong to appreciate beauty, and this isn't the only time that we're going to see this. We saw this back with Rebecca. We'll see it again and again and again in the Bible. Yeah. Sarah, absolutely. All of these people are lovely, but it's what you do with it that, uh, and, you know, uh, they, they, uh, there's the old saying that beauty is only skin deep, ugly is to the bone. Forget that. Don't listen to that because uh, beauty, beauty is, uh, <laughs> anyway, you, you hear that and people like to say that you've never heard that one. Yeah, that's why they say you might as well marry a pretty girl because ugly just keeps on going. But anyway, um, you know, you want to disregard that one because the beauty of a lot of these people is not the physical beauty. The beauty of a lot of these people in the Bible is the, 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 the beauty which is within, you know, the Proverbs 31 woman. So anyway, um, hello, Pat, how are you? So, you're going to try this, Pat. I may be wrong, but back in uh, chapter 28, the last few verses, right. 20, that may be like set up for this chapter kind of describe what's going on. Keep back my father says. What are you saying? Well, he's saying, uh, so, um, about this journey that he's going through, and then his father's house. Right. And I'm taking, and that I'm taking, and will give you food that you're supposed to wear. So I may return safely to my father's house, and the Lord will be my God. And, it's, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. Right. All that you give me, I will give you a tent. Oh. So, are you, you were talking about his intentions? Jacob's intentions? No, I was talking about Laban's intentions. Jacob is just going up there looking for a wife. And he does want to return back to Israel. There's no Jacob's doubt about it. Back? No, Laban's intentions, what I'm saying is I think that he is not the most honest guy. <laughs> when Laban, oh. when Laban, what, he was there, he's Rebekah's sister. Isaac, Jacob's father is Isaac. Isaac went up to the same place to get a bride. Actually, he didn't. They sent Eliezer of Damascus, the, the servant of, uh, of uh, the household. And Laban, when they went up to get Rebekah, Laban saw all the wealth that I, Abraham gave to pay the bride price. Mm -hmm. And so Laban, when he saw that, you know, he was all excited about it. He, he, I mean, you could just tell from the context of those verses that he was very excited about all the wealth that he was going to get selling his sister to, the, mm -hmm. to his uncle. Okay, well now this is the son of that rich person. And so he is looking, I believe, for some benefit out of Jacob staying with him. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm referring to. All right, so where were we? I don't know, 17, 18. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than to give her to another man, so stay with me. Okay, now he already, after 30 days, knows the guy's work quality. After two days, you know if an employee is going to be good or not. That doesn't mean that a good employee doesn't go bad. But a good employee normally is identifiable pretty quickly. And he probably knew this, and he thought, I got a great deal here. I'm getting seven years of labor for this daughter of mine. I'm not going to have to feed her anymore, and I'm still going to get the best. And you know, I'm saying it's all just, it's all profit to him. And over there, I mean, you can see it even today. They'll sell off a daughter for, it doesn't matter what her age is, if they can make profit off of her, that's the way they treat him. So, I mean, I don't think it was any different in Laban's case, especially noticing his character before and what we're going to read about him later. 